Yeah, it's 5.08, September 1st, and there it is, one and a half inches of rain, thank God. Yeah, I hung Ed's horseshoe up there Sunday, and it brought me good luck, Ed, inch and a half of rain from the time I hung that up. Yeah, we had a half inch of rain on the 6th which was a Friday, we planted that up top food plot on the 7th. And then we, we didn't have any rain all the way through the month of August. Uh, we had a, half, a quarter inch on the 27th, and that was it. So we had three quarters, basically three quarters of an inch the entire month of August until um, Basically yesterday morning late on the 31st and we got an inch and a half So let's go up on top. I haven't been up there. So what's up there? You're gonna see right along with me for the first time Yeah, that trailer got some water in it. I was gonna <laughs> That's nothing compared to what went on down in southern United States of so the devastation the tragedy uh, Mother Nature Wildfires in the west, drought in the midwest, and hurricanes. Well, here we go. Haven't been up here since the 7th of August. And it looked like when I left that night that it was going to cut loose and it didn't do anything. So if we go down through here, like I said, I just wasn't up to coming up here and looking at the oh the desert. Well, we'll see in a little bit together. We'll see. Yeah, this is oh ding ding. That's the government driving you dingy. Like uh, grew up without seat belts, motorcycle helmets. No disc brakes, shoe brakes, and everything worked out good. But this is real time, and I'm really glad to be able to do this. Because even when you think you do everything right, you better be set mindset for things that can go south on you. Well, here we are. We planted this in Forge Oats Destination and some beets and greens on the 7th. And the dirt worked out perfect, but in the drought, <laughs> nothing germinated, except for some velvet leaf. Absolutely nothing. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty distraught. A lot of deer tracks been walking around here. Like I said, I haven't been up here. Velvet leaf come up through a few. But no germination of destination, forage oats. It just laid in the dry soils and did nothing. Now I came up here with the intent, boy, my beans are pretty good. They held their own A little water hemp, but they really did good. They really did good. I don't have time. Oh, that, that water hemp's a never ending battle, but you can see. Those beans, are, they really made a lot of, the beans did really good. Look at those beans on there. It, uh, anyhow, no germination on the rest of the stuff. Yep. Like I said, I came up here with high expectations of putting some triple 13 on. Oh, no, not triple 13, but Aria, and 
the only thing that grew from the native seed bank was the small velvet leaf and nothing germinated. Yeah, fall annuals are getting to be more and more oh, risk taking. You get these different weather patterns now that are out of the norm and they just don't produce the tonnage at the required dates anymore. But uh, it just, now luckily you can see the browsing on these beans where these deer have been out here. Browse, they browse those down quite a bit. But like I said, there's no, this was in forage oats. You watched it being planted in perfect conditions on the seventh day of August. And there was nothing germinated. So there's no guarantees in fall annual food plots, none whatsoever. And luckily for me, I got the beans planted back in May and they will become a winter food source. And now with this inch and a half rain, Lord only knows what the germination can happen. But as we walk over here, wow, I, I'm disheartened, but no, no way in shape and form to this as the people down in Louisiana and states like that, that have been hammered. And as I get over here, this is just plain butt ugly. And like I say, I'm showing you this because this is the way it is. <laughs> Absolutely no destination. All that grew up was the ground's covered with velvet leaf. That's all that's up there. That velvet leaf is deep enough in the ground that it would find moisture and germinate. And I'll tell you what, that's really ugly. I had such good, good growing conditions back on the 7th and it was so optimistic. But the reason the velvet leaf came through is because it's a native seed bank and it was deeper in the ground. And, and the pure traction was hauled on top of the ground and at that time had moisture but ended up not receiving any for almost 30 days. And so the velvet leaf that were in the ground come up through with the triple 13 as an additive for it. And well, I'm glad to show you this. You know, it's, like I say, it, it, it is truly disheartening, but it's nothing compared to what the people in the Western states with the fires and the Southern states with the losing their homes and you can see these huge cracks that were in this ground up here. And, uh, oh well. But I've hunted deer since the early 70s. And I didn't need food plots. So it's not like you need them. But boy, it is disheartening when you put all that work. But you better be, better be prepared for that mentally. Because you just seen it. I showed you on the seventh perfect planting conditions and all we got were weeds that germinated because that seed was deep in the ground. See how long that root is? And, uh, and there are some forage oats in here trying to come up but for the most part it was a wipeout. And like I said, uh, thank God 
for the bean crop. Uh, the deer have been in here pretty extensive, but that's what it's for. But I'm glad I'm glad it happened this way because so many people act like if you do this, 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 this is going to happen. Well, it may have a good good chance that it will. But even when you use the best seed on the market, it's still up to Mother Nature. And like I said, right now, I'm traversing through these beans. And there, you can see my shorts there. They're almost waist high, which is phenomenal. But the beans got going and got going earlier and uh, give credit to the, the conceal it really took off and looking pretty spectacular so there won't be no spreading of uh, aria on these plots tonight that's what I was trying to beat tomorrow night's rain or Friday morning's rain that's going to be unnecessary yeah you can see how High this concealed growed. It uh, way over my head. That's as high as I can reach, right there. So it did a good job. It beat the drought, and these beans here, they beat the drought also. Right here looks like deer bedded down in there. Nice round little spot. And look at the bean pods on there. Mercy sakes alive. Look at that. And this field was planted uh, with my planter splitting the 38 inch rows. And it really came in just like if it was drilled. So that, I had some problems back there in May, but I was rewarded with a pretty good stand of beans. But just be prepared. And like I say, you can see where the deer have been foraging on these beans now that we're out here. They're only like knee high. Because... But... Won't be like I said. Well, I came down here. I came, I came down here to see a different result. But, like I said, my hedge apple tree, it's got hedge apples on it. It's loaded again, year after year. Look at those in there. So, the vastness and the variety of what you have for your deer is really instrumental. And I knew I'd find that knife someday. <laughs> it was. It, uh, so let's wander over here, take a look at the acorns, see how they panned out. Oh boy, they did. They did super good. There's acorns all over that tree, just loaded with them. So you have a variety a food source and unfortunately the oats didn't germinate which ain't gonna germinate with no moisture so yeah I, this is not what I expected to be looking at but I wouldn't come up here I had several opportunities and I told Deb no I ain't going up there and look and all you would have been was now what I'll do is I'll play the odds I still got some forage oats that other field over there where I planted the, the pure attraction it's just it needs to be completely ripped out there's too many weeds in it but it's too wet to do it now so but here it is, 
uh, six days, it would have been 30 days of growing, and the only thing that grew down here in southern Iowa was the cracks in the ground. Basic, basically, I can still see some of the cracks or harl where it went, and never, never rained enough to take all the harl tracks out. It, uh, but it rained an inch and a half. It's really troubling times. 2021 with the Afghanistans and the soldiers getting murdered and there's no other word for that um, and a president that condoned that and I don't care what your politics are but then the fires out west the smoke in the air and that Ida hurricane is it's just Real troubling times in our mother country. So <laughs> I can laugh because I still got my home and I got my health and possibly something may grow in there in the future, but it sure didn't grow with no rain. Well, that's it from the non-typical. I'll come up with a new plan. But I'm really glad to share this with you because the conditions were perfect on the seventh day of August when I planted. The best conditions I'd planted in years. You buy the best seed, fertilize the right, soil test, but if you don't got rain, all you got is pain. So you got to learn how to live with it up here because it could drive you nuts, but it's, it's irrelevant. Because like I said, we got beans, and maybe to rip this up a little bit or slightly, just disc some oats in it. And I want to thank Ed again. I put that horseshoe up, and it almost filled the car up with an inch and a half of rain from Sunday to uh, Tuesday morning. So thanks a lot, Ed.